Commissioner, Commissioner, if it's convenient, we propose to interpose um, Ms Bernadette Heald now, who gives evidence in respect of a separate rubric sent to Suncorp and answered by Mr Dransfield, and then Mr Dransfield will return to the witness box. I've spoken with my learned friend, Mr Kirk. He has some questions for, in re-examination for Mr Dransfield, but if you're content for that to all happen at once at the end, Mr Kirk's I content am, for that Are course. you content with that yes. course, Mr Kirk? I, I am, Commissioner. Yes, yes. Um, well, the witness is Bernadette Jody Heald. Uh, Ms Heald, do you mind standing just one moment while I ask whether you'd prefer to take an oath or make an affirmation? Oath, please. Swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. Thank you very much. Do sit down. Mr Costello. Your name is Bernadette Jody Heald. Yes. And you reside at an address that is known to the Commission. Yes. You're currently a student. Yes. And you attend today in answer to a summons served on you by the Commission. Yes. Do you have that summons with you? Yes, I do. Commissioner, I attend to that summons. Exhibit 6.381, my summons to Ms Heald. Uh, and Ms Heald, have you also prepared a statement at the request of the Commission? Yes. Do you have that statement with yes, you? Yes, I do. I understand there are two corrections you wish to make to that statement. Yes, there is. The first is... The date needs to be the 30th of August, 2018. That's the, that's the date that you signed the document? Yes, it is. Thank you. Could you make that correction and initial the change, please? And the second correction you wanted to make was to paragraph 32. Yes. And in that paragraph there's a document ID that's got one too many zeros? Yes, it has. Could you strike through that zero, please? and initial that change. Yep. And Ms Heald, with those uh, corrections, are the contents of that statement true and correct? Yes, they are. I tend to that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 6.382 will be the statement of Ms Heald. Ms Heald, you're married and you and your husband have two children? Yes, we do. And both of your children have some health concerns? Yes, they do. My eldest has um, received a heart transplant and my youngest suffers from um, some mental health issues, as in anxiety and depression. And did you have a house and contents insurance policy with Suncorp in 2015? Yes, I did. And what's the closest major city to where you live? Newcastle. And what's the region that you live in? Hunter Valley. All right. In April 2015, was your house damaged by a storm? Yes, it was. When in April? 21st of April. And could you describe the storm? Um, there was a lot of torrential rain, um, a lot of wind, and we had some uh, minor flooding due to stormwater runoff. And do you recall how much rain fell roughly in the 24-hour period? Roughly about 440 mils. All right. Um, did the storm cause damage to your house immediately? Yes, it did. Um, our garage doors were blown in. Um, our laundry was um, back door was damaged because of the water. We also had um, the railings off our balconies blow off. Um, also, a glass window was smashed as well. And we also had some jip rock issues and stuff. Uh, did you... You mentioned then that there was some flooding in the garage? Yes, there was also some flooding in the garage as well. Did you have much in the garage at that point in time? We did. We had some um, building materials in the garage as we were renovating our house. So we had some uh, kitchen that was due to go in. We also had some general items that you would store in a garage as well. And did you make a claim on your insurance policy? Yes, we did. How soon after the storm did you lodge your claim? The next day. And how did you lodge your claim? Um, over the phone. And what was said to you in that conversation? Um, at that point in time, Suncorp advised us they would send out a building inspector to inspect the damage and that they would also send someone out to do a make safe. Did they give you any idea of how long that might take? Not at that point in time as they'd received a lot of calls for help. All right. Um, someone did eventually come out, a building inspector? Yes, we did. Before the building inspector came out, did you notice any more damage? Yes, yeah, soon after we made our claim, um, we actually had... Um, some brickwork that was above the entryway from our laundry to our garage actually smash in two. And that caused you some concern? Yes, we did. Bricks normally don't just break. And do you recall when the building inspector came out? Um, he eventually came out in May. Right. 
and um, what happened when he came to the house? Um, he came out, he had an extensive look around, um, double-checked um, a lot of what was happening. He basically said to us that there, he had concerns that there were some issues with the structural damage um, and that it would need to be investigated. It was out of his league. He wasn't um, prepared to comment on that. So he suggested that he would go back to Suncorp and recommend that a structural engineer possibly come out and investigate our home. Are you aware whether that building inspector produced a report for Suncorp? Yes, he did. Did you get a copy of that report? Yes, we did. And when did you get a copy of that? Um, that was about the middle of May. Thank you. Do you recall what the report recommended? Um, it recommended that a structural engineer come out and inspect our home. It also recommended that there was some um, neglect and some other prior issues that would also need to be inspected. Do you recall if it made any recommendation about how your claim should be settled? Not at that stage. He did mention there was a possibility of a cash settlement, but he didn't go into any detail for that. And what did you and your husband decide to do after you received that report? Um, we were pretty disappointed because we felt that there was a lot missing from the report and that there was a lot of inaccuracies in it as well. So we decided then at that point to talk to some legal representation and that's when we spoke to Brenda Staggs at Legal Aid. All right. And um, was it uh, Brenda Staggs that explained to you that you might be entitled to temporary accommodation? Yes, she did. She had concerns that our house wasn't safe either, the same as what we did. And uh, were you aware that you might be entitled to temporary accommodation before you spoke to Ms Staggs? Um, we weren't exactly sure. Um, we had an idea we might be able to, but we weren't confident with that. All right. Um, a little later in May, Suncorp sent another builder to your property? Yes, they did. And um, what did that person do? Um, that person originally came out to do part of the make safe. Um, at that stage, he only came and attached the balconies, hand railings to the balcony. Um, I asked him about the garage doors, which was still um, not usable and creating an issue. And he said he was only aware of balconies. He wasn't aware of anything else that had to be fixed. And did Suncorp also send another building assessor? Yes, they did. They also sent out um, Brad Hughes to come and look at the property too. And um, what did that building assessor he, say to you? He walked around the building. He was there for quite a while. He double-checked um, <coughs> pretty well much what our assessor said. He had an idea that there was going to be needed some major repair works and that, again, the um, engineer would need to come out and have a look and confirm, but he felt that there would be some major repairs that would have to be undertaken to make our house <coughs> back to normal. When you say he spoke of an engineer, was that a structural engineer? Yes. And that was the second occasion that you'd been told that a structural engineer would need to come? Yes. And uh, did that building assessor have any views about whether the house was safe? Um, I did ask him if the house was safe and he said he couldn't exactly be sure. He said a structural engineer would have to have a look at it. All right. Did a structural engineer come out? Yes, the they house? did. Yes. And when was that? Um, that was probably about uh, the end of May and early June, roughly around that time, he came out and he inspected. He was probably there for about half an hour. Um, it was all site. He didn't actually take any testing or anything. He took a couple of photos of my husband's phone and that was about it. All right. Um, the storm happened on the 21st of April. Between April and the end of May, did you notice more damage to the property? Yes, we did. There was more cracking in the gyp rock. Um, there was more cracking in the walls. Um, and there was also the cracking to the floor slab because tiles had started to pop off in the laundry. And we noticed a small hairline crack in the um, house slab and we would have some muddy water sleep, seep through when we did have some more rain. All right. And was that cracking making noise or did yes, you only it see it? Yeah, you could see it and you could also hear it. And was that concerning to you? Yes, it was, um, because we had a consideration. We were just really wondering if our house was actually safe to live in. Right. Um, it was really tough. It was probably after the first major brick broke that we had issues um, because of my daughter's anxiety. She would wake up in the middle of the night terrified that her house was going to fall on her head. And it's very hard as a parent to actually um, tell her that it's safe and you don't know yourself. All right. Um, that takes us up to about the end of May. Yep. Um, and there was some popping and cracking. You've seen some bricks breaking. Um, did you notice some more damage between June and July that you can recall? 
Um, yes, there was also some damage to um, the support for the Western Wall was starting to come away slightly from its supports. So some of the mortar was being cracked there and we also had some other bricks that were breaking as well in the Western Wall. So there was gradually more and more, especially with the gyp rock and, and some other things that were happening as well. And by this point, the structural engineer had attended? Yes. And um, did the structural engineer produce a report? Yes, he did. And did you receive a copy of that report from yes. Suncorp? Yes, yeah, we received that on the 11th of June. And what do you remember about that? the recommendations made in that report? Um, they were very confusing. Um, there was no real details to say why our house was broken. Um, it just didn't make any sense. It didn't give us any sort of answer. Um, it just basically told us that there was some sort of issue. They weren't exactly sure what the issue was and they also said that we would have to wait for our house to dry out. So six to 12 months and hopefully the house would go back to the state that it was in and it would settle and then they would be able to do the repairs after that. Do you remember roughly when you received that report? Um, that report, we did actually receive that on the 11th of June. All right. Um, I think it was also in June that your husband made a complaint to Suncorp? Yes, we did, yes. That and, was around the 18th. And what caused um, your husband to make that complaint? Um, just sheer frustration in the fact that we had no real answers as to what was wrong with our house. Um, we would get nowhere. We would ring up and we would have a different person every time we'd ring up. And you'd have to tell your story 15 times to try and get to someone that actually knew what was happening. Or you'd ring up and, and you'd be on hold for hours and then you'd have to hang up anyway because your call never went through. So there was no communication hardly. We were always chasing them and we just got no answers. We felt like we were getting roadblocks the whole way. All right. Um, did you give Suncorp some comments on the engineer's report that they sent to you? Yes, we did. And um, did Suncorp agree with what you said about the engineer's report? Um, some points they did, but generally no. They felt that there was a pre-existing issue um, and they also felt there was other issues wrong. They weren't exactly sure what was wrong with the house. They just said basically it'll go back to the way it was after the land dries out. Would it be fair to say that you were fairly critical of the engineer's report? Yes, we were. Did you request another engineer? Yes, we did, just and because we wanted answers. And what did Suncorp say about that request? Um, they refused. In the beginning, they actually did refuse. Um, we said to them, you know, we have a broken house. We just want to know why it's happened and how we can move forward. Um, Suncorp eventually agreed that yes, the second they did. engineer could come out? They did. Do you remember when the second engineer came out? Um, he came out in early August um, and he was there for about two and a half hours. Um, he went right over the property um, and again he said yes there is some issues um, he was concerned that um, there was structural damage and that he was um, also said that it was definitely from the storm um, so all of the roadblocks that we'd had before saying that there was other issues he said no it's definitely storm related and he said he would do up a revised repair list considering that the house was slowly disintegrate, disintegrating um by this time, you were obviously quite concerned about the safety of the house. Did you consider moving out? Yes, we did. We couldn't actually move out um, because we're in a semi-rural area. Um, there's not a lot of rentals. People come into your street and they buy and they stay. So it's very hard to get a rental anywhere. So we don't have any family either. Our family all live in Queensland. So we sort of didn't really have anywhere to go. We're still paying a mortgage. And we just couldn't afford to move out and pay a mortgage and also pay rent. All right. Um, did you receive a copy of the report prepared by the second engineer? Yes, we did. And do you remember the recommendations or conclusions that were expressed in that report? Um, he basically said that we would still have to wait for the um, land to dry out um, and that the... Um, that there was definitely more cracking so they would have to possibly replace part of the house slab because that was the main issue that they felt in the laundry um, so they wanted to replace part of the house slab 
um, do the gyp rock works and also fix some of the cracking in the brickwork, um, and but do this after the land had still dried out. And what did you and your husband think about those conclusions? I was a bit concerned. I didn't think you could actually break a house slab and replace it. I thought, personally, if a house slab's broken, you replace the whole house slab because that's the foundation of the house. Do you recall if Suncorp, Suncorp um, obtained quotes for the work that was recommended by the second engineer? Yes, they do. They obtained two. All right. Um, that was all in August, is that right? Yes. Then in September you contacted your solicitor again? Yes, we did. We'd actually had um, a couple more bricks break on the um, western wall and we were concerned because that's on the side of our neighbours. We were actually concerned that um, some of the bricks could fall off and, and injure one of those kids that live next door. So we emailed them. I emailed Brenda and said, you know, this could be a health hazard. It could be a risk to people. Do you recall receiving a quote from Suncorp in October for the work that had been recommended by the engineer? Yes. And do you remember roughly how much the quote was for? Over 30000 just over 30000 All right. Um, so this is October. Yes. Um, about six months after the storm. Yes. And um, at this point in time, were you satisfied that the cause of the damage had been identified? Um, it had partially been identified, but we didn't know the extent of the damage. And that was more of what we wanted to know, was how far the damage was. At least we had a, a partial answer that it was caused by the storm. But 30000 to replace a part of a house lab and a bathroom when you don't know exactly what's happening underneath the house is, sounds crazy to me. You, you'd need to know what exactly has happened so as it doesn't happen again. And do you remember what Suncorp's position was once it had received the quote? Um, as far as they were concerned, they wanted to cash settle because they believed um, that that was the best way to do it because they couldn't guarantee that the repairs that the engineer had recommended and that the builder had quoted on was actually going to um, fix the problem. So that's why they wanted to cash settle for that amount. So what did you say to Suncorp about the cash settlement proposal? Um, we quote? said we didn't accept it. All right. Um, it was about that time that you lodged an internal complaint with Suncorp? Yes. And um, that complaint was lodged in October? Yes. And what was the outcome of that complaint? Um, the outcome of that was they agreed with us that um, Suncorp had handled our claim badly um, and that they could have done better with their customer service. But again, they didn't actually go into any detail as to what was wrong with our house um, and basically stuck with the view that that was enough. Your house is, is what it is and still cash settle. So um, we still got no real answers from them. So what did you do after you received Suncorp's response to the internal complaint? Um, that's when I contacted our legal aid representative, Brenda, and I spoke to her and she said, um, we can actually go to FOS and make a complaint, which Suncorp had already advised in their last email that we had from them as well. Suncorp had advised about FOS? Yes, they had, yes. yes. And before Suncorp had advised you about FOS in that email, were you aware of FOS? Um, not actually as such. Um, we um, didn't actually know about their complaints really process either. Um, but yeah, until they'd actually said, we didn't realise that was the next step that you could go to. So with Brenda's assistance, you lodged a complaint with FOS? Yes, we did, Do you yes. remember when that was? Uh, that was the beginning of December. And were you still speaking with Suncorp during that period? Um, yes, we were still trying to negotiate something with them. We were still trying to at least get some sort of um, closure or some sort of an idea of what was still wrong. Um, Suncorp actually offered us um, $1,000 compensation at that point in time um, and we refused it because we felt that wasn't enough. We were already at almost Christmas time and we still had no answers. We still were living in a house that was broken and no one basically really cared. That's what we felt like. Um, so you rejected the $1,000 offer? Yes, we did. And what did Suncorp then do in response? Um, the next day they came back to us with an offer of $3,000, um, provided we agreed to um, end the dispute with FOS. Um, and had you also requested that you be 
entitled to appoint your own engineer? Yes, we did, with, yes. With Suncorp meeting the cost? Yes, we did. And did Suncorp respond to that request? Yes, they refused. Um, but they did eventually, after the 3000 after the offer of the 3000 they did eventually say, yes, well, we will fund you for an engineer. And what did you say in response to the $3,000 offer? Um, we accepted the $3,000, um, but we didn't accept the cash settlement and we continued with the FOS claim. And um, you said that Suncorp agreed that you could appoint your own engineer? Yes, they did. And did you do that? Yes, we did that in the middle of January. And um, who did you appoint? We appointed Burke Engineering, a local engineering firm. Um, and when did somebody from Burke Engineering come to your property? Um, they came out around the same time. Um, so it was about the middle of January. Thank you. Um, and do you recall who it was that came out? Yes, that was Peter McDonald. And um, how long was Mr McDonald at your property? He was there for two and a half hours. He had a really, really good look around. Um, he wanted to do more testing. So because he wasn't satisfied that just looking at what he saw, he could actually ascertain what had happened. Did he give you any initial comments about his views? Yes, he did. He basically said from my understanding is that the house was under load so that meant our house would rise up in the middle and sink down in the middle depending on what the water level was underneath the house was so that meant that the weight of the house on wasn't distributed across the whole house frame it was tended to be distributed on the two ends which was causing the damage so that was causing the house basically on a seesaw effect and that's why bricks were breaking because it wasn't an even distribution across the whole house. Did he say anything about the foundations of the house? Um, he suggested that there was some issues with the foundations, but again, he couldn't exactly be sure what was wrong um, until after he did some testing. And was there any particular testing that he thought was necessary? Yep, he suggested that some geotechnical surveys and testing be done just to see exactly what was happening underneath the house. All right. Once you had um, spoken with Mr McDonald, did you contact Suncorp? Yes, we did. Um, we contacted them several times about the safety of the house because by this stage the house was really starting to fall um, apart. There was a lot more cracks showing um, and we really had concerns that you could sit there of an afternoon or of night time and you could hear the whole place just moving. So we asked several times. I think at one point I even begged them to move us out because we were so concerned about our safety. And what did Suncorp say in response? Um, basically, they said they wanted to wait for the reports to come back before they'd do anything. So, no, they wouldn't move us out. They were, as far as they were concerned, the house was still safe to live in. And Mr uh, McDonald wasn't in a position to write a report until the geotechnical investigations were complete? That's right. And um, was somebody appointed to do that work? Yes, they were. All right. Um, in the meantime, while this was going on, you were progressing your complaint in FOS? Yes. OK. And when did the geotechnical... Uh, expert come to your property? Um, he would have come probably towards the end of January, beginning of February, and he came and made his report, um, and that's when we got our final full report through from them, probably a little while after that. Do you remember, when you say from them, do you mean Burke? Yes, from Burke. Do you, do you remember roughly when you got Mr McDonald's report? Um, we probably got that, I think it was about, I think that was about the May, I think we got that, March or May that we got that through. All right. And do you have a recollection of what um, Mr McDonald had recommended in his report? Um, he recommended that the house be knocked down and rebuilt. Um, and he also recommended that temporary fencing be put up around the house so as to protect anyone from any other further bricks coming off the walls. Did you agree with what he'd said in his report? Yes, we did. And did Suncorp? Um, they did to a certain extent and they agreed to put the temporary fencing up. Um, but it never happened because we basically said to them, if you put the fencing up, you have to move us out. Um, if you put temporary fencing up, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think the house is safe. So why would you leave someone live in a house where there's temporary fencing all the way around it? How do we get access to it? And they weren't clear on it. So Suncorp, in the end, wouldn't put the, they didn't put the fencing up at all. Um, do you recall that in about June of that year, an issue was raised by Foles about the maximum amount that could be awarded? Yes. Um, and do you recall if you discussed that with your solicitor? Yes, we did. The limit was $309,000, um, and they wanted it raised just simply because um, there was more damage there. So to be able to knock down and rebuild the house, um, $309,000 was not going to be enough. Um, and Suncorp agreed to raise that limit because as far as they were concerned, there was no issue to answer. We were basically at two ends of the scale. All right. 
Um, do you recall when you found out uh, that Suncorp had agreed to waive the cap? Um, that wasn't until October. Thank you. Um, and throughout that period, had Suncorp at any point agreed with the findings of Mr McDonald in his report? Um, they didn't really agree with it probably until towards the end. Um, it, there was, a, From what I understand, there was a lot of toing and froing about the engineer's report um, and subsequent reports were made because Suncorp's engineer, once we provide a report, they'd do a report on that replying back and then they would ask for... Suncorp's engineer would ask for more information from our engineer, so then another report would have to be done, and again, Suncorp's engineer would report on that. So there was a lot of toing and froing, but eventually, in the end, they did agree with it. Eventually, um, Suncorp agreed to move your family into temporary accommodation? Yes, they did. Do you remember when Suncorp agreed to that? Um, that wasn't until, I believe, early in January, February the following year. That's 2017? Uh, yes. Thank you. Um, and did you manage to find somewhere to move the family? Um, we did eventually. It took a little while just simply because there is no rentals around our, our area. And we'd actually negotiated with our neighbours to move into their property as they were going on holidays for an extended period. So we had to stay put for just a little while longer until we could move in. All right. Um, and do you recall when you moved into your neighbour's property? Um, we moved in there in April. We actually moved in. Um, and Suncorp agreed to pay the rent on that property? Yes, they did. They agreed that in March. Um, they agreed to $400 a week, but we had to privately negotiate that because Suncorp couldn't find any temporary accommodation for us in that area, so they left it to us. And we negotiated with our neighbours at 450 a week because that was basically um, what they'd been informed was a reasonable rate for their for their house. All right. Um, at this time, the dispute was still in at Foz. Yes. And what did you understand Foz's role to be? What was the question they were going to decide? Um, at that point in time, the question was deciding um, exactly how much money we were entitled to. So um, Suncorp had agreed um, to, at some point, to pay um, our rebuild of our house, but it was the ancillary, as in the temporary accommodation, how much of that that we were able to um, entitle to, um, mortgage discharge costs and things like that. So just the little ancillary amounts after that. So in an early, it, when the dispute first went into Foz, mm -hmm. there was a dispute about the extent of the damage. Yes. And your view was the house needed to be rebuilt. Yes. And Suncorp's view was that the quotes it had obtained were sufficient yes. to meet the damage that was there. Yes. Um, and after the various engineering reports had been prepared um, and Foz had made some determination, the dispute in Foz then shifted to be one about the uh, some other costs. Yes, yes. Thank you. Um, did you think the house needed to be rebuilt? Yes, we did. It and wasn't evident at the start in the first few months, but then once the bricks really started to break and the cracks started to show, and especially the floor disintegrating and the muddy water flowing through, the groundwater actually flowing through the house lab, we knew that the house would have to be replaced. And was it early 2017 that FOS agreed that the house needed to be rebuilt? Yes. And um, you were satisfied with that decision in FOS? Yes. And then uh, it was a matter for you and Suncorp to agree on the amount that you would be cash settled for? Yes. And um, did you ne negotiate with Suncorp about that issue? Yes, we did. We, did. There was a lot of toing and froing with that throughout um, 2018, uh, 2017. Sorry, we eventually um, went through the process. We'd put in an offer, and they'd supply a counter offer. And did you do that with the assistance of your solicitor? Yes, we did. Okay. Um, did you manage to come to an agreement with Suncorp about? The costs? Um, we almost did, um, but in the end we had to go back to FOS um, to say to get a final figure because Suncorp was still refusing to pay for some of the important costs, as in temporary accommodation was our big sticking point. So th this is um, the point 
that you were making a little earlier, the dispute went back to FOS this time about the dollar figures. Yes. Thank you. Um, do you recall what offers you made to Suncorp? Yes. And do you recall the offers Suncorp made to you before it went to FOS? Yes, we do, yes. What was your best offer to Suncorp? Um, our best offer to Suncorp um, was 721000 And what was Suncorp's best offer? Um, their best offer at that point in time um, ended up being 635000 Okay. And before Suncorp had offered 635000 in the earlier dispute before FOS made its first determination, the offer was about 30000 About 30000 yes. Thank you. Um, and in the end, what did FOS determine? Um, in the end, FOS determined we ended up with just over 744000 You were happy with that result? Definitely, yes. And um, do you recall when it was that FOS made that determination? That was um, in 18, 19th of January this year. So that was the 19th of January this year. This storm happened on the 21st of April 2015. Yep. Um, where are you living now? I'm still in temporary accommodation at this point in time. Because it took so long for the whole process to go through, um, we lost our builder that we had lined up to do the work. So we basically had to start from scratch again um, with a new builder and providing all the documents and picking a new house and, and whatnot. So it took a lot longer than what we expected. And it also took longer because we needed the money to be able to start the rebuild and because we were being paid in dribs and drabs and bits and pieces, we took a little bit longer to actually start the rebuild. Have you started the rebuild? Yes, we have. And when do you think it'll be finished? Hopefully by early next year. All right. Um, now, just reflecting on um, the process, how would you describe this experience? How would you describe how this experience has been for you and your family? stressful and frustrating. Um, I never hit so many roadblocks in all my life and if we hadn't had Brenda on board, our legal lady, we wouldn't have been able to get where we are today. We'd still be left with no house. Um, the fact that they left us live in a house for over two and a half years that was broken which they knew about and we had two special needs in the house, two special needs kids which they knew about right from the word go. Um, was atrocious. It was such a strain on everyday life and everyday life still goes on. You can't stop that. And the added stress from that of having to live in a house that was just constantly breaking, um, it was really tough. Was there any particular aspect of dealing with Suncorp that you found particularly difficult? Trying to have to talk to five different people at once. Every time you'd ring up, there was never actually one point of call until right towards the very end. It was always you'd ring up because you wouldn't have a direct number generally. You'd have to ring up through the call centre. So then you'd have to explain to the first person what happened and you'd go through it. Then they'd put you onto someone else. Then you'd have to explain to that person and that person would go, oh, that's out of my leg. OK, I need to put you onto someone else again. And you got that every single time you rang up. And it was just really hard at a time when you're already trying to keep on track of what's happening in your family and you've had a natural disaster, you know, Life is not at a normal pace and you're having to do this. The other thing was the fact that we had to chase them every step of the way and that there was just no help. That's what Suncorp was supposed to be for. They were supposed to help us and we got nothing. Do you think that you could have navigated the process with Suncorp without the help of a solicitor? No way, no. Every time we um, had an issue, we had to ring Brenda and that's the only time we really rang Brenda was when there was an issue when we were struggling to get the claim moving again or if they put another roadblock in our way, that's when we'd call Brenda and say, please, can you help us? Do you think that you could have navigated the FOS process without the assistance of a solicitor? Definitely not. There was a lot of times there um, we probably maybe lodged our claim a bit late in the year for the first time with FOS. So it was sort of early December when we lodged the claim the first time and then FOS sort of went on holidays for Christmas, which I get that. Um, but without Brenda there doing the toing and froing, um, it was really hard to keep track of Suncorp and all the documents that they were flooding us with. And it was counter offer and, and report offer and y you sort of didn't know which way was up sometimes. So it was, without Brenda, we wouldn't have been able to keep track of anything that was going on. And why have you decided to give your evidence in the Royal Commission today? I've got elderly neighbours that live near us. If this had happened to them, 
they wouldn't have made it through this. They would have taken the 30000 and they'd be left with no house, literally nothing. And that's basically what could have happened to us. And we can't afford to be left with nothing, same as these people. You know, we've paid our taxes, we've done everything right through the year. We had home and contents insurance, as you're supposed to, so when a disaster happens, they're there to help you. That's what you have insurance for. And if that had happened to them, these poor people would be out on the street. They would have literally nothing and we had no option. We had to see this through because we would have had nothing as well. And then I wouldn't have been able to provide a house over, a roof over my kids' house, you know, over their heads, a basic right. It's what you're entitled to. You're entitled to have a safe home and that's what you have insurance for. Mr. I have no further questions. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Kirk. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, Neil, you may step down.